Hi, it's Samantha from Samantha by Design. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new here. Today's time-lapse painting is of George the Bull Mastiff. This is a commissioned memorial pet portrait, and I think it turned out amazing. I will talk you through the process, so let's get started. I'm painting this with acrylics on a 9x12 canvas, and as per usual, I went ahead and gave it a few coats of gesso, toned it with an even mixture of burnt sienna and yellow ochre. I transferred George's sketch onto the canvas using just white school chalk, and I'm going to start with the background. I'm using a mixture of phthalo green yellow shade, ultramarine blue, and burnt umber for this, and I'm adding some unbleached titanium for the brighter areas on the left side of the canvas. After I gave the background a few coats, I moved on to the floor around his bed and added the first layer using yellow ochre, burnt umber, and unbleached titanium. I then mixed his color palette using a variety of yellow ochre, burnt sienna, burnt umber, raw umber, unbleached titanium, Mars black, ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, and titanium white. And once that was done, I got started on the eyes and nose. I think the face is the most important part of pet portraits, so I'm really taking my time here and I'm paying close attention to all the color variations, and I'm also mapping out where my lights and darks are going to go. As with any animal painting, I'm making sure that my brush strokes follow the direction of the fur that I see in the reference photo. I'm putting down my darkest tones first to be able to add highlights on top to make his short fur look less flat and more realistic. I say this in every video, but it's important. The first layer of acrylic paint always looks a little weird, but just trust the process and just keep building your layers. I had so much fun painting George's adorable face. Doesn't he just look like royalty? He's so cute. In this first layer, I'm making sure that his little skin folds and little wrinkles are placed exactly where they're supposed to be so that it really does look like George and not just some random dog. As you can see, I'm always working from dark to light. The shadows and highlights really matter in this type of painting because they determine the bone structure and the shape of George's face and body. The first layer of his face and neck are done, so now I'm going to start adding more definition and highlights in this next layer. The lighter areas will look like they stick out more because they are catching more light, whereas the darker areas will look receded since they're in shadow. For the first layer, I used a bigger brush and I painted in the direction of the fur. For the next layers, I'm using a smaller round brush to further define the clumps of fur that I can see in the reference image. I'd like to note that I'm not painting each individual piece of fur for a small scale painting like this because it can make the piece look less realistic and a little messy. I'm quite happy with this face, so now let's move on to the body. But first, I'm going to paint in a base layer for his collar so that I don't lose it in the process. For this, I used a mixture of ultramarine blue, burnt umber, some titanium white, and some Mars black. I started with his back end since his chest and paws will overlap this area. 
I'm using the same techniques as before, starting with the darker tones first and always making sure that I follow the direction of the fur. This part's really important. Once that first layer was done, I went ahead and did a second layer with some smaller and some stiffer bristle brushes to capture some highlights and the texture of his short fur. For this, I used mostly a dry brushing technique for every layer apart from the first. I'd like to remind you to just take your time when you paint and don't be afraid to make changes if you'd like. Acrylic paint is quite forgiving and you can just keep painting until you're happy with the results. As you can see, I went over the same area so many times with thin layers. I slowly added more and more highlights and I alternated between a yellow toned color and a red toned color to capture all the slight variations in his fur. Once I was happy with that, I started painting his little back feet. Again, I'm paying close attention to shadows and highlights because that's what determines the shape of his paws. As I'm painting, I'm taking many pictures so I can compare them to the reference photo. This way I can see if I need to adjust anything. If you have a hard time color mixing, I want to assure you that you will get better in time and maybe working with a limited color palette would be better until you understand how certain colors mix. You'd be surprised how many times blue and red don't make purple. Your painting will be fine as long as the values are correct. That means how dark or how light an area is. You can check this by making your reference photo and the photo of your painting black and white. Now that his back end is done, I'm moving on to the chest and paws. Since this area is bigger, I will be using much bigger brushes to cover more ground. I'd like to point out again that if you compare the back end to the first layer of the chest here, you can see how drastic the difference is and why it's important to work in layers in acrylic. The first layer is done and now it's time to add a second coat and deepen those shadows, make the highlights brighter and really make sure that all the little skin folds are perfectly placed. Losing a pet is so hard. I'm truly blessed to be able to create a beautiful memorial piece for the owners to cherish forever and remember how wonderful and special their fur baby was. As I'm adding more layers to his chest, I'm adjusting the values and I'm going back and forth between my yellowish color and my reddish color.
As I'm dry brushing the texture of the fur, I'm really using the texture of the canvas to my advantage here. I finally got his chest to a place where I loved it, so I started working on his collar. To create the look of silver without using metallic paint, I started with a dark blue gray base and I added some whiter highlights over top to make it look shiny. I was all done painting Mr. George, so it was time to add a second layer to the floor to make it look more like wood. I made sure to add a nice dark shadow under his paws and under his bed so that nothing looked like it was just floating there. Once that was all done, I started adding the first layer to his bed. Again, I'm starting with the darker colors to be able to build layers on top. His bed is white, but the shadows were a mixture of ultramarine blue and burnt umber. The first layer was dry, so I started adding some highlights with a lighter version of my ultramarine blue and burnt umber mixture. I'm saving my pure white for the very last part. Here I'm using a stippling motion to make the fabric of his bed look fluffy. That second layer was done, so I started adding some pure white to really make his bed look plush and three-dimensional. And now I'm just painting my edges with that same background color to make the painting all cohesive and ready to hang. Don't forget to sign your work! And here's what the finished painting looks like. If you've enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and make sure to click the bell to be notified when I upload next. It really helps me out! You can find the link to my social media accounts in the description below. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate you a lot and have a wonderful day. Bye!